Well, today is the first real taste of Arctic life for Prince Harry. He's flown in this morning, he's met up with the rest of his teammates and he's been briefed. But while the four wounded servicemen have had around 18 months to prepare for this trip, Prince Harry's got just a couple of days to bring himself up to speed before he sets off with the rest of the Walking with the Wounded expedition team on the trek to the North Pole and to the top of the world. Just tell us, you know, how inspirational these guys are to other injured servicemen and women who may be watching and aren't as far down the road to recovery as these guys are. Um, I think for all of them, and it was a huge selection process as well for this, um, and I think there'll be so many people that will be sitting there, the guys will be in Celio who've just been, who've just come back a week ago, and will probably be sitting here going, give me another, give me another, I want to do it, I want to do it. Um, and they, you know, they're, hopefully their chance will come. Um, you know, there's going to be more expeditions similar to this one. Um, and, you know, yeah, as you say, the inspiration that these guys are giving to everybody else is truly fantastic, not just to, to, to military forces, but um, within the sort of the, c the civilian public as such as well. People who have injured themselves somehow or, you know, who are able able to do stuff but don't think they are. Um, I think it's fantastic. I mean, anyone can walk to the North Pole carrying a, how heavy the sled is for four weeks. I think it's, it's unbelievable. It's unstoppable. And are you ready for it? Are you nervous? Um, I am nervous. I'm nervous for them. I'm slightly nervous for myself as well. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a fantastic adventure. I'm very lucky to be to be amongst a group of lads like this. Um, I'm only there for five days, and um, I'll probably shed a tear like everybody else will um, when you know when when I when I leave them. You know, those guys are, are, are fantastic, and if I wish I could carry on the um, the whole way, but yeah, me, anybody else, you know, five days with that lot, and then when you leave them, um, it could be um, quite emotional. So we'll have to wait and see. So when the guys are out on the ice, they're going to have to consume around 6,000 calories a day, as well as pulling 42 kilograms of food that's going to last them over the whole trek. So, Martin, just tell us some of the food that you're going to be having so you don't get bored when you're out there. Uh, I've, what I've done with the food is I've mixed it all up. Okay, So we've got a combination of... The most important thing is calorific contents. All right? We've got to get around 6,000 calories a day in. Okay, So that means you've got to be critical on what you take. Um, niceties are... Uh, or exactly that but the key is is high calorie intake got a snack pack so one of them has got all my main meals in it and then the snack packs are predominantly sweet stuff um you get fed up with chocolate is that one day snacks that's one day snacks yeah oh so you've word. got about three thousand calories in there between flapjack uh, my mum and my sister very kindly made us some tiffin which has gone down well with the team they've all got a bit each i had a friend who was supposed to make me some but she didn't because she's useless so I, um, I've got some fuel bars in here, soup, and then some noodles, because you're gonna, you get fed up of eating sweet stuff the whole time. So you want to mix it up, you want a bit of savoury in there every day, if you can. So I'll so just... the weight of that for That's a kilo. That's around a kilo. And well, food in total, I reckon I've probably got about 40, kilo, 40 kilos, 45 kilos worth of food. Well, after a year and a half of blood, sweat and tears, the moment Jacko, Guy, Martin and Steve have been building up to is now finally here. They're into the last few days of their training as they make their final preparations before the 200-mile trek. We join Prince Harry and the team as they jump through the gaps in the moving ice and into the freezing water below. And spirits are still high, although some are taking it a little less seriously than others. <laughs> But not one to be left out, I'm also going to have a go. So what's it like then when you go in? Is it really, really cold? No, not in the slightest, to be honest. It's, it's so not in the slightest? Cold. No, it really isn't. It's warmer than... This doesn't have any um, cold for at all. So will it sort of be any different when you, if you have to do it out? I suppose the only difference that we've been talking about just now is that it, it's going to be much harder getting these in. There's obviously going to be people standing around. It could be 40, 50 mile an hour winds, which will obviously make it a bit harder. It's completely sealed around the top so that yeah. no water will go in. Just don't put your head in. Yeah. No. Don't go head first. I was going back to him. Can't believe I'm doing this. It's good fun. It's very salty, isn't it? <laughs> what are you doing, Katie? Tell us. Um, well, basically, I'm just going to have a little go. I'm doing what the, the lads have just done. I'm going to jump in. Um, I'm going to try and do a backward walk over into it. Three. <laughs> <laughs> no, cartwheel. <laughs> you're, the, you're the girl. I don't know. I just do what it's like. Does that go with me now? I'm going to have a go now at jumping into the icy water to see what it's going to be like for the lads when they have to get in and cross the icy leads on their way to the North Pole. So here goes. Are we best going forwards or backwards? Backwards. Double shot. Yeah, okay. Right, here goes. Oh. Oh. Hey, are you the only one who listens? 
How is it, Katie? It's not that cold, actually. It's quite nice. Uh, make sure you have your And with it being a very chilly minus 25 degrees out here again today, it's not something they're doing just for fun. They're actually testing out their protective suits for when they have to cross vast stretches of icy open water where the ice below them pulls apart. So I've just had a go at crossing one of the open icy water lead but it's not actually that cold and uh, with the with the suit on it almost feels like you're in the dead sea and you're just sort of floating on the belly but uh oh. and together with prince harry they're being dropped off at barnio icefield for the start of one of the most challenging and dangerous treks to the very top of the world and in doing so, they're hoping to enter the record books by becoming the first group of war-wounded amputees to make it to the North Pole completely unaided while raising £2 million for the rehabilitation of other injured soldiers. Real Radio.